Hi there, this is Justin. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a really awesome distribution view in Tableau. For this video, I'm going to be using the Superstore dataset that comes with Tableau and, in, and specifically the orders uh, table. If you're not familiar with this dataset, uh, what's important for you to know is that the granularity of this data is um, products bought within orders. So we can see over here uh, order ID, but you can see there's duplica duplications. And the reason for that is because the granularity is all the way down to the individual product name. And this is the data set we're going to use. So when I say distribution view, what I mean is I want to create a view which shows me the distribution of um, a specific dimension when looking at a specific measure. So in this case, I'm going to look at customers and I want to see the distribution of customers by the number of orders that they've purchased within a certain time frame. Okay. Now, you might be wondering, why would you want to use um, the order data if we want to analyze dimensions, a specific dimension? Well, you'll see shortly how we can use the fixed function in Tableau to get around this, um, this challenge. And, you know, this is a really nice um, trick so that you don't have to uh, rebuild data sets if you've got the granular um, almost, you know, the event-based data or the history data, you can then take the dimension data that's uh, available within it and use it within, um, within your analysis or to build your visualization. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to be able to, we need to calculate the number of orders per customer. And we can do that by using the fixed function. So I'm going to go ahead and create the function or create the calculator field and I'm going to do fixed customer name and I'm going to do count distinct order ID. And this is basically going to force Tableau to do a grouping across the entire data set per customer name and it's going to count the, do a distinct count of order ID. So I'm just going to call this order count. Mm. Um, order count. I'm just going to put in brackets. Custom name. And notice that it's going to credit as a measure. But in order to do the distribution, we need to actually change it to a dimension. Okay. You can go ahead and drag that onto columns. And we can then see that across this entire data set, the most um, number of unique orders uh, that a single customer has is 17. So now we're going to go ahead and do a distinct count, customer name, and this way we can do a distribution. Okay, but let's go ahead now and turn this into a bar chart. I'm just going to reorganize it. And there we can now see our distribution. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn on labels. And this is going to be our absolute view. Just want to get rid of the axes, clean it up a bit. Let's go ahead yeah, and write distribution absolute. And now I'm going to duplicate, rename this percentage total. Come up here to our um, measure. And we're going to add a table calculation and do percent of total um, and table across. Okay, let's do a bit of cleanup. Okay, let's remove the decimal spots. And now we can actually see a distribution. Um, well, actually, let's leave one just because we have the zero over here. This is our distribution of customers by the number of orders, right? You can see how quick and easy that was. 
Now, to do a little test, if we sum this up, we should get to 100%, and we do. So across our entire data set, we can now see the distribution of customers by the number of orders they've bought. But we still have a bit of an issue. This view is not normalized, meaning that our very oldest customers have had the most time to climb up towards the, the max, while newer customers, you know, haven't had the same opportunity. So we need to create um, like a smart filter here where we can, we're only going to count orders which uh, have happened, let's just say, within, um, within 12 months of the first order. So how do we do that? Okay, so let's go over here. I'm going to create a new field. This time we're going to do fixed again. And this time what I need want to do is I want to find the very first uh, order date per customer. This is going to be kind of our starting point. So we're going to do here first order date. And this is customer name. Okay. Now, what we could do is we could set this as a filter and only look at customers which have had their first order within, you know, a range, range of dates. So, for example, we can come and, you know, look at 2015. Right. Um, and that's a bit better than before, but maybe we can make it a bit smarter. So let's go ahead and I want to create a parameter, which will be, um, let's just call this number of days for now. And it's going to be an integer by default, just put an ID. Okay. Show that parameter. And now we want to basically create a filter, which is only going to count orders that happened within 90 days from the first order. Okay, so since our data set, remember, is on the granular level of order, um, this actually makes it much easier um, to do it this way than if our data was, you know, a row per customer instead. So let's see how we're going to do this. Go ahead and create a calculated field. And I'm just going to start with WIF. And we'll do the following. We want to check the date diff in days between first order, right, and order date. And I like to just do plus one because I don't like to work with zeros when I'm doing date diff. But you know, you can, you don't have to add the plus one, and you can just kind of work around it. And say if this is smaller or equal to, yeah, that's one reason you don't, or you know, you don't like it's not a good idea to put the number sign because you can't really type it um that doesn't really pick it up so anyway we're going to do a date diff in days and we're going to check the first order date remember this is on the customer level but since each order has a customer it's essentially across all orders and the order date and if that you know plus one is smaller or equal to 90 days then we are going to turn a one if not, we're going to put a zero. Okay. And this is going to be our smart filter, a smart normalization filter. Um, and let's see what happens if we go ahead and add this. And I see we're going to have an issue here. Uh, we need to actually turn this into dimension and now put up here we're only going to take the ones 
and notice nothing happens, right? The reason for that is because auto count is now is not being reflected. Okay, you'll notice our view doesn't change. So we actually have to change auto count to take this into consideration. So this is actually not good enough for us. So what I'm going to end up doing, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate it for now. And I'm going to, instead of returning a one or a zero, I'm actually going to return order ID or null. Okay. So basically if the order itself, right, falls within the state of range, we can include the order or it's going to be null. And I'm just going to rename this as normalized order ID. Cool. And now we can go go to our order ID. Sorry, our order count. And we can now change this to our new. Excuse me. To our new um, normalized order ID. So we now have a parameter that we can play with and notice that it's going to affect the view and it's going to only include orders right now, which happened within 365 days of the first order. And then this view now becomes completely dynamic based on this input. Um, let's just see what happens if we add a crazy number, right? And we get all of our data. Uh, another thing you could do, which could be nice, um, is we can go ahead and create a color uh, scheme based on the order count. So if order count customer name is greater equal to one and order count is smaller or equal to five, then let's do this um, good. Else if Let's do it greater than five and smaller ten. Better. And then I can do else test. And, oh, and let's just call this order count grouping. Now I can go ahead and drag this onto color, edit our colors, so good will be, um, make it yellow, yeah, do something like that. And now it's much better on the eye and we can, you know, easily group um, specific levels uh, and then easily see the the percentage total by hovering. Uh, one last thing you can do, which I think is a nice touch, is you might want to actually look at the distribution um, not as a single um, as a single distribution but actually group this by certain cohorts. So you could always do something like this where we can go ahead and manipulate. Um, whoops, what are we getting over here? All right, let's change this dimension. And now I can basically see the distribution across different cohorts. Um, I'm not going to do it in this video, but you could make this also dynamic across all kinds of things. So, you know, maybe you use. Um, you know, the first order date as a cohort, or maybe you want to use um, region instead. And, you know, make that 
aspect dynamic. That's it. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did and have any questions, then feel free to comment below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this on Tableau and other tools for analysts and operation specialists, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.